Now you will all likely have seen one of these devices before, either placed on your chest or draped around the neck of your favourite healthcare professional. This is of course a stethoscope and it forms an absolutely crucial part of many clinician toolkits. But how exactly does it work? And perhaps more crucially, how do we actually use them? We're not just applying them randomly to different parts of people's bodies. There is method and logic to exactly what we're doing, and in this video I'm going to break that down for you. And this actually kicks off a brand new series of videos exploring the different tools, items and pieces of kit that doctors have in their bag and use regularly. And what better place to start than with the humble stethoscope. So hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ollie, I'm a junior doctor living and working in England and working as part of the NHS. And at this point in the video, I just want to give a massive shout out to our sponsor Skillshare, who I will tell you more about in a little bit. So let's start off just by looking at it. Fundamentally, it's a long flexible tube in the middle here that connects a round thing, a piece that we call the chest piece, to two other tubes at the other end that go into our ears, and these things we call binaurals. You can see that these binaurals have rubber tips on the end to block out external noise and conduct the sound more effectively into our ears. And that's really what all of this is about, amplifying noises that are picked up and detected at this end of the system, conducting them through the tubing and into my ears so I can hear them. Now this is a very simple and basic stethoscope design made by a company called Lippmann, who are a well-known stethoscope manufacturer, other brands are available, and there are loads and loads and loads of different variants available at very different price points. Something that's particular to this design is the rotating chest piece, which has two parts, one on each side. Under this flexible diaphragm here, we have a piece called the drum, and this is what's most commonly placed against the body to listen for sounds. And then on the other side, we have a smaller structure called the bell, which is used for listening for lower frequency sounds. And with this one, we just have to rotate it to engage either the drum or the bell, depending on what we want. And so how might I actually use this with a patient or what exactly am I listening for? So that's probably the more interesting bit. Today, I'm going to go through the three most common things that I use a stethoscope for in my daily practice. Although it should go without saying that there are far more and more experienced and specialist clinicians than me will use it for different things. The first and perhaps most obvious thing we use them for is listening for heart sounds. And although I can feel someone's heart beating with my hand and that forms an important part of many clinical examinations, I often want to hear the character of those beats which can tell me a lot of information about how well someone's heart is working. And there are actually four particular points on the chest that we use most commonly, again not exhaustively, where each of the four major heart valves can be listened to, or the medical term we use is auscultated. The first one that I usually listen to is the aortic valve, which we can locate on the right side of the chest. Specifically, we go parasternally, so that's right next to the sternum, this hard bit of bone here at the top of the chest. It's best heard in the space between my second and third ribs, which for me is about here. And as that aortic valve opens and closes, that's oxygenated blood flowing through it to the rest of my body in the systemic circulation. The aorta being the giant big artery that comes off the left side of the heart and runs down the middle of the body. Now on the left side of the chest, in the same plane, again parasternally we listen to the pulmonary valve, through which blood is flowing to the lungs to go and collect more oxygen. If we then come vertically down two rib spaces, we come to the tricuspid valve. This is the valve, and this is the valve between the top chamber of the right side of the heart, the right atrium, and the right ventricle. And then finally over here on the lateral left side of the chest is where we listen for the mitral valve, the valve between the top of the left side of the heart, the left atrium, and the big muscly chamber at the bottom, the left ventricle, which again is the one pumping blood through the aortic valve. Just as an interesting tidbit, the name mitral valve comes from the fact that it looks like a mitre, or the hat traditionally worn by bishops in Christianity. And sometimes, of course, when we're listening to heart sounds, we will hear something called a murmur, or an additional sound that wouldn't normally be there. One of the most common sounds that we find, especially in older people, is something called aortic stenosis, or a narrowing of that aortic valve, so blood finds it harder to make it through the valve as it's all calcified and narrow, which creates this characteristic whooshing sound as blood is forced through a narrower space. Just as 
a bonus sight, some doctors will place their stethoscope over the carotid artery in the neck, the external carotid, to hear this sound more clearly. Now let's just pause halfway through the video to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. We all like learning new things, and in fact, as doctors, it's part of our professional practice to keep building new skills. As you've no doubt noticed, short form video content has been taking over the world recently with the advent of platforms like TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. And I've been trying to bring some of my content to that new format. I myself have started using Skillshare and I've been using Halise's amazing class video for Instagram. Tell an engaging story in less than a minute. She's an expert digital storyteller and has put together this course that's really engaging and helpful when it comes to crafting those key messages quickly. And it's so simple that even a doctor can understand it. I wanted to use Skillshare for a quick pick up and put down bite size approach to learning that I can build around my super busy clinical workload, whether that's while commuting or traveling to conferences or during a quiet spell on call. To close out, the first thousand people who use the link at the top of the video description below will get a free full month subscription to Skillshare. That's more than enough time to get through a course or two and see what you think. Try Skillshare and build some new skills today. Now coming back to our stethoscope, the other sound that doctors like to listen to often in the chest, the other major organ, is the lungs. And we're listening to all parts of the sounds here, both inspiration, that's the deep breath in, and expiration, the complete breath out. And if anyone's going to the doctor anytime soon and they start listening to your lungs, please don't talk while we're doing it because it reverberates <laughs> through our heads and it makes it really difficult to actually hear what's going on. And what we're listening out for are additional sounds again, or things like crackles, if there's fluid in the lungs secondary to something like heart failure, or we've overloaded you with too much intravenous fluids, or perhaps if there's the presence of an infection like a pneumonia, or equally we might hear a wheeze if the airway is obstructed in some way, if there's a foreign body, or in the presence of something like asthma. And lastly, coming down to the other side of the diaphragm, we can listen for bowel sounds too. Most of the time, the bowels should be reasonably active, and because the bowels are hollow tubes, they transmit sounds through them, just like water running through a pipe. And noise and lots of sound is very much reassuring here. You can sometimes hear these sounds perfectly well without a stethoscope, and we associate this phenomenon in society with being hungry, but when you can hear those really loud grumbling sounds, that's called borborygmus. And that's just these loud grumbly noises that come secondary to peristalsis, which are the rhythmic muscular contractions that propulse or move food through our digestive system. And as liquid and gas move and shift around in this system, it transmits these noises, and that's what we're listening for. While there is some debate about how useful listening to bowel sounds actually is, most of the time the thing we're concerned about is bowel obstruction or blockage, which would sometimes be signified by a complete absence of bowel sounds when we're listening to the abdomen for long periods of time, or what the textbook describe is this tinkling sound with obstructed bowels. And this is something that I've only come across a couple of times in my entire education and career so far. And it's really bizarre to describe, but the textbooks describe this metallic tinkling sound. And it very genuinely does sound like two tin cans being banged together, which is caused by fluid moving between these dilated loops of bowel and reverberating. It's a really peculiar sound. But that brings us to the end of this video, guys, talking about the humble stethoscope, a crucial part of any doctor's bag in their toolkit. I hope that's been interesting for you. There's loads of really interesting little bits of kit that we get to use in our day-to-day -day work. And I love taking the opportunity to demystify medicine for those interested in a career, working as a doctor, or perhaps those who are patients and interact with doctors a lot as part of their own lives and help break down those barriers. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and leave a comment down below. And a huge thank you once more to our sponsor and partner for this video, Skillshare. Remember to use that link in the description below to get your first month free and sign up and take a course and see what you think. Take care, guys. See you next time.